A couple of years ago, I made a video about a TI-99 adventure game called Get the Gold. It was a type-in program from Compute Magazine. I never had a TI-99, but a friend did, and we had fun typing this one up and playing it back in the day. Well, fast forward to 2024. I recently ported this to the Apple II. I actually had an Apple IIe growing up, and later an Apple II GS. Here's the title screen of the completed port. There were a few challenges when it came to porting this. Firstly, the TI-99 can easily change the background and text colors on the screen via BASIC. The 8-bit Apple II computers can't really do this. However, I added some code so that if you ran this 8-bit program on a 16-bit Apple II GS, which is backwards compatible, you would see the background and text colors change in the same way you see it on a TI-99. The way I did this was I found an article in Nibble magazine that described some soft switches on the 2GS. It was in the November 1987 issue. Certain soft switches can be accessed in BASIC to change colors on the screen. This article also provides the numerical values for each color. Specifically what I did was detect if the computer is a 2GS, create a subprogram to avoid a conflict with the 2GS clock, set the colors of the background, text, and border, and then plug these numbers into the provided code. And if it's not running on a 2GS, no problem, it just won't be in color. Half of the time, the TI-99 program is not in color anyway. Next was the sound. Part of the appeal of Get the Gold on the TI-99 was to showcase some of the sound effects and music that the computer could do, all from the basic command call sound. It could even play three notes at the same time to create harmonies. If you know anything about the Apple II, its sound capabilities were fairly primitive and it involved manipulating a click from a speaker. Clever programmers could make some basic music by working with these clicks, but it wasn't until the Mockingboard add-on in 1983 that some fantastic music and sound effects would be utilized in select Apple II programs. However, forget the gold, I used Electric Duet by Paul Ludis. This way you don't need an add-on card to play the music. It uses two voices instead of three that the TI-99 is capable of, but it sounds pretty close to the original. Lastly, I had to deal with randomization. Get the Gold contains a randomly generated maze that covers two floors. The Apple II, as well as some other 8-bit computers, weren't that great when it comes to randomization. This is because identical sequences can be generated on repeated executions. The TI-99 had a nice command called randomize that could be used occasionally to eliminate this problem. The Apple II does not have this command. However, if I do something like this, the computer will keep generating random numbers until a key is pressed. I tested it out in my port, and everything is truly randomized now so that each time the game is played, it will be different. Anyway, let's try this out. Here's the Apple II port again. So I added this view instructions here at the bottom because the original listings in Compute Magazine had two separate listings, one for the instructions and then one for the program itself. Most people just typed in the program and didn't type in the instructions. So this way, if you want to see them, just hit yes. If you don't, you hit no. So if I hit yes, So it does switch um, to kind of a non-color screen now, and this is how it originally is in the listing. I know some some get the gold programs on the TI-99 floating out there, they, they kind of uh, have different colors at this point, because I think whoever typed it in kind of took liberty with, you know, changing the colors, but this is what it originally looks like in the listing. So this is an adventure game where the player must answer certain questions as he wanders through the chambers and tunnels of a two-level maze. You're given a thousand gold pieces, transported to a lower level of a 128 chamber two-level dungeon. Your goal is to escape with as much gold as possible. Gold pieces are acquired by answering the question asked by the monsters that inhibit the dungeon, inhabit the dungeon. 
Each time an answer is correct, gold is given as a reward. If it's incorrect, gold is taken away. So the monsters will ask you one special question. Where is the gold? Hint, where would you put a thousand gold pieces if you were carrying them? So here are the moves. Um, so you have to, you're going to encounter monsters, thieves, empty chambers, trap doors, secret doors, and so on. And it's north, south, east, west. There's quit on the game, gold, gives you the gold count, and then up at stairways. And then you get a game rating at the end. The rating can be between negative 500 and positive 1,000. So it depends on the number of moves as well as the gold that you've accumulated. All right, so you can see the colors are changing as, as we do this. And then level one of the maze actually doesn't have color. It's just going to be a black background with white text, just like it is in the original listing. So I'm going to hit north. Empty chamber, hit north again. Empty chamber, north again. I'm in a smoky empty chamber. North. So monster, um, this one just gives me a warning. Okay, so north-south tunnel, so I can only go north and south. I'm going to keep going north. Empty chamber. North wall. So I can't go any further north, so now I'm going to head west. All right, so I surprise the thief, and he drops 35 gold pieces, and I found a roach. So once again, you could hit G for gold. It will tell you the gold pieces you have. So it keeps track for you. Hit West again. All right, this is where you're asked a question. Tell me where the gold is. So... Since I looked at the listing, I know the correct answer is bag or in bag. And you get rewarded. If you don't put bag, then it takes gold away. I'll go west again. I found the super key, by the way, it said. All right, west wall. So I'm going to go south. Empty, south. Empty, south. Smoky, south. Here we go. So we'll put bag. All right, south again. South. All right. So I kind of wish that, and maybe this was the original plan, but they ran out of room, is just having different questions. So it'd be kind of neat to have like a different question, you know, um, a bunch that randomly, you know, appear. So, but in this case, it's just the same question. All right, this time... Uh, steals 121 gold pieces. I search the room and I find an old sword. One of the random things you can find, and the original listing was a TI-99 computer, which is kind of funny. So in the Apple II port, obviously they changed it to you can find an Apple II computer. So that sometimes will happen. All right, south wall. So I'm not, now I'm going to go east. And I found a stairway. So at this point, I have to hit up, and you can hear footprints. Okay, so the second level is going to have this yellow background. Found the key again. I'm going to head north.
north again. North. North. All right, I was kind of lucky here. I found the stairway. At this point, I can check my gold and decide, you know, do I feel like I have enough gold to get a good ranking here or not? Uh, I probably should get more because I started at 1,000 gold pieces, so I really didn't find a lot. So I'm probably not going to get a good ranking, but I'm going to hit up just to see what happens. Rating is negative 5. Remember, you can get a rating between negative, I think it was 500 and positive 1,000. I did it in 20 turns, which is good, but I did not get a lot of gold. So um, that's kind of your goal to get more gold. All right, so I think that just kind of sums it up. Just thought this would be something fun to do a port of since it was a TI-99 game that I enjoyed, but I never had that type of computer. I had an Apple II. So I just wanted to see if I could take this compute game and, and have it work its way over here to the Apple II. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I will have like a link for a download underneath. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe if you like this video. Thanks for watching.